Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth. Hello and thanks for joining us today. It's Enterprise Morning on Enterprise TV. It's the midweek already and ours is a promise of great programming to set the tone for a great morning. I am Henry. You can begin, of course. Esther is here. Esther, how are you? And good morning to you. Good morning, Henry. I'm doing great. Looking gorgeous. As you look as good as well. Yes, our Esther Wachikuan is definitely not just another Wednesday. The newspaper headlines are quite a thing to see, Henry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's where I would begin first before heading into arm and conversation for this morning. And of course, Barrister Evans of Philly who otherwise dons a rabbi's hood is here with us for the segment. Good morning to you, <laughs> Mr. Ofeli. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Rabbi, I'm quite glad that you're on set today. Very well. Because I needed to machete the issues on the papers. Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're starting off with. All right, so we're, we're starting off um, with The Guardian. And the big story on page six says, after three billion dollar crude deal, additional ones against resource-backed debt and also still on um, page six of the same newspaper the guardian it says tinubu pledges more powers to states and local councils and also on page eight of the guardian it says over two 27 million kids driven into hunger malnutrition by extreme weather and to you Mr. Ophelia, let's go into the big story for today. And I love you to make sense of our big story, which says after a three billion dollar crude deal, additional once against resource back to debt. So can you just break it down for us so our audience can get to understand better? You need to have bear in mind that he decried rising poverty despite six point seven trillion naira resources. Mm -hmm. He also talked about the fact that poverty alleviation program should be rejected because anytime monies are funneled into that then there is no transparency, no auditing. So he's literally saying we should live in per, per capita GDP. Can you explain what he means by that? Yes. Um, what Adesino is saying, speaking from the economic point of view of the policies of government, mm. uh, in particular the NNPC, which uh, over the years we have seen how NNPC have never been transparent. Adesino's postulation is a wise man's way of scolding an institution. That is why I say they should be aware. You see, because um, the policies of the NNPC, other than just managing the uh, oil resources of the country, they also have a part in which they should play on policy that should alleviate poverty, um, uh, fund critical projects, and make life better for the citizens. Because they oversee that sector. And that sector is meant to actually empower the citizens. Mm. So all the outfalls of the policies that that section is supposed to yield, NNPC have not been um, transparent in, in those areas. And when you look at GDP, capital income per head okay. of, the, of the country as we speak, it does not reflect the life of the citizen. There are countries where you go to Botswana, for example, they actually have the highest capital income per head. What is capital income per head? When you take your GDP and then multiply it by your population, okay, okay, then you see what the fall is on each citizen. Okay, okay, so the citizens on that reference must be able to live to that capacity, the capacity for which uh, national income accrues to them by virtue of um, economics. Yeah. But we, we have a situation where the citizens live far below that statistic. That's in Nigeria, mm -hmm. that is. Yes, okay. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The citizens live far below that. So an economist is speaking now that you need to look at these projections very well. Because your policy attempt to help them live up to that standard, those who pilot it are not transparent. Hmm. They never get to benefit. The persons who these uh, funds are targeted to you know, lift up, they are not always getting 
that 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 returns. So, and if you look at what we are the the, the volume mm. that was expected by OPEC standard, I mean talking about crude now, yeah. one point seven two, one point seven four two per day. Okay. It's what we are, what we have the quota. But so we are not doing up to that. Okay. Okay. We are not doing up to that, and we are not doing up to that because of the same issues of um, uh, oil theft, vandalization, and the rest of it. And when you have vandalization anywhere in the world, you know that it is an outcome of poverty. Hmm. That is why Saudi Arabia flourished so well. Apart from the fact that they have a security gadget with which they watch their pipelines mm. and all oil installations. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, the citizens don't even tamper. They don't see need to... There is no to... need for it because what the derivables from crude, from oil, reflects on the mm. people. Mm. The people gain from it. So what is the essence? When you go, if you want to vandalize, it means like you are going to destroy what belongs to you. Exactly. Here, the people don't own it. Mm. The fewer elite own it, so they citizens who are daring enough goes there to vandalize it. Hmm. Okay, then the, the Navy that watch over what is stolen offshore, they also contribute to what is going on. So <laughs> at the end of the day, we are not we're not getting it right. Okay. And we are still we are still um, having plan. deals, mm. three billion dollars deals. Mm -hmm. Every day we have billion dollars, billion sure. dollars and it still does not water down. But the adverse is fairly Nigeria's population keeps rising. And over 6.7 trillion natural resources in terms of dollars may increase the food importation burden to 110 billion naira in the next two years. This yes. is an estimation. And this was what was said by uh, the African Development Bank group, Dr. Akumi Adishina. Yes. Now, here is where it gets actually quite um, a little bit ironical. So it's barely three months, right? Nigeria borrowed 3 billion naira, uh, rather, $3 billion, you know, for the crude, the, the backed up crude account. Yes. And this is where he is actually complaining that no money has been accountable that money that three billion dollar mm -hmm. has been unaccountable mm -hmm. and so long as we consistently continue to borrow we will continue to delve deeper in poverty he said Africa needs to stop that also he mentioned the fact that factories are closing up and stifling small microeconomic businesses more small businesses yes. across board and he's literally saying that the economic space is not giving that space for entrepreneurs to breathe and we keep borrowing so in other words what is the strategy through which nigeria can get afloat with this current puddle in this current puddle you see the reason we keep borrowing uh, unwittingly is because we have not been able to solve our insecurity challenges okay now see where it gets bad we're talking about food shortage and mm -hmm. scarcity yeah um to an extent the, the farmers in Nigeria were able to feed this population with subsistence agriculture, True. except for few that have industrial scale farms mm -hmm. and all that. But right now, as it stands, the insurgents have taken over the space. As we speak now, this week or last week, Zamfara, we, have a, a, we had a very serious issue in Zamfara mm -hmm. where the bandits came out and then arrested um, two two local government. Wow. And this was a few days after the service chiefs came to the House of uh, the National Assembly on Plenary to it's say true. that there is no aspect, no space in the country that is being held by uh, insurgents. Just two days, three yes. days after that statement was mm. made, we saw that in Zanfara. And we saw that everywhere. And in Zanfara, they, they are even telling the farmers that mm. you must pay such an amount of money before you can you can get you can proceed to, to get yes, into your farm. You want all that. So, the, for agriculture, we are not getting it right hmm. because of insecurity. And that flows to other areas. Okay? okay. But then we keep borrowing. And when we borrow, there is no transparency and accountability. Okay? These funds are depleted. They are used for recurrent expenditure. Then the other ones are shared. Sometimes we borrow to pay salary. That's, that's crisis. You understand? So, um, the production quotient of the Nigerian state is on its lowest ebb because of insecurity. So, if you have not been able to address 
insecurity, you will not be able to address any other thing. Mm. And if you look at Section 14 2 of the 1999 Constitution, it is hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people, to good government derived by legitimacy, mm. that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Security and welfare. We don't have security, we don't, don't have welfare. Have. So what it means is that you don't have government. Mm. All right, Barrister Evans, let's go into the Daily Trust newspaper. And the major headline there is, Tunibu six fresh 7.1 trillion Naira loans. The writer says to fund agri-health road water sectors, and Nigeria's debt hits 94 trillion Naira, rising debt profile worrisome, must expand revenue base, and that is the suggestion of experts. We also have above that major headline, can election judgment disparity and uh, air and judicial officials to be punished, NJC. Then, of course, airlines must pay compensation for cancelled delayed flights, federal government. NSITF crisis festers despite Lalong's intervention. Panel depinch probe. And, of course, we have on the bottom page, left side, leadership crisis rocks Balchi Assembly as court sack speaker, deputy, electoral reform, JGA advocates prescription of cross captain INEC unbundling, and 11 traders die in Kebi Road accident. Barrister Evans, I would have actually loved to ask you about uh, the president seeking fresh loans, 7.1 trillion Naira loans. But, of course, you have already explained that um, on the Guardian newspaper. So let's look at what JGA is saying. JGA is actually saying that they, he need to, there needs to be uh, an electoral reform where uh, parties will no longer cross carpet. Yes. For example, you belong into the APCU at the last minute you're cross carpet into the PDP. Also, INEC needs to be unbundled. Can you explain what that means? Well, uh, if you talk about cross carpeting, okay. uh, talking about the reform, hmm. you'll be talking about amending the Electoral Act. And you cannot amend the Electoral Act without amending the Constitution. Hmm. And it's difficult to say people should not cross carpet in the true sense of it because of uh, the issue of fundamental rights mm. as predicated under uh, section um, uh, chapter 4 of the 1999 constitution. Because there you have a right to belong to any association of your choice. And the constitution didn't say if you belong to one political party, you must die there. <laughs> so uh, if you, you, you are going to have human rights issues with that. Okay, except the constitution is amended to say if you belong, if you have a right to belong to any association of your choice, they should add something there. Okay. They should say, in the case of your membership of a political party, okay. so you now create an exception. Okay, okay. Uh, you have to amend the constitution. If you, if you amend the electoral act and you don't amend the constitution, you, you are still going nowhere hmm. because if I violate the um, electoral act and you want to take me up on that, mm. I will tell you how the constitution is superior. This constitution is supreme, and its provision shall have a binding force on all persons and authority throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But don't section you see... One, subsection 1, section 1, subsection 3 says, mm. if any law is inconsistent with this constitution, this constitution shall prevail, and that mm. other law to the extent of its inconsistency mm. shall be void. So that means electoral reform cannot work unless they're able to reform the constitution. Yes, because the constitution defines democracy. Mm. The electoral act only defines the process. Constitution defines democracy. Yes. Or supposedly defines no, democracy. No, it defines democracy. It's the constitution that defines democracy. The electoral act now defines the process with mm. which um, you because if you look at the constitution, the constitution now define qualification, mm -hmm. disqualification, mm -hmm. age. Who should contest? Okay. The age you should okay. be. Mm. You belong to the political. You must sponsor mm -hmm. by political. The constitution defines democracy. The electoral act only sets the agenda for the process to run through. But my question is, is, is this: When whoever designed the electoral act, didn't they foresee a situation where the the results of of such um, uh, policies would sometimes be uh, problematic? Didn't they have that as part of? their strategy while they were designing. We were problematic to what exactly? Exactly. With the issues we have now with our electoral process, the credibility of our electoral process. When the electoral act was made, didn't they have a provision to guide against that? Well, the, the electoral act is not elastic enough. I know where you're coming from. Hmm. You, are, you, you, you want a situation where an electoral act will oversee all eventualities mm -hmm. and, and make provisions to curb all the uh, defects. Mm -hmm. Okay, for in law, there's no foreseeable end. 
Mm -hmm. That is why you keep amending laws. And because society is dynamic, mm -hmm. okay? Now, you cannot craft a provision of law that we turn to a robot to fight against those selling their votes. You can only make a provision there that the ones who sell their vote and they are caught, they will be prosecuted and punished. You understand? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I'm saying is the some of the malfeasance and I illegality you find in our electoral space yes. are not constitutional or electoral act based. They are attitudinal. Mm. Okay, people are in discipline. Okay, and because they are in discipline, they will sell in fact in the in the one of the off circle elections, the one before this time, where the there was a man who after the election he was so he was so angry. And the press journalists went to him and said, Why what is the issue? Can you tell us about the election? He said, No, I can't talk about this. Why are you angry? He said before he came out to vote, he was promised ten thousand naira. After voting, they now gave him five thousand naira. Hmm. He did not even know that he is a criminal. Hmm. That what he did was an offense. offense. That he's supposed to be in court now being charged yes. for, for collecting gratification yes. mm. to vote, selling his uh, civic responsibility. He didn't know that. Okay, so what I'm saying is that most of the persons who contravene the, the, the law, the electoral act, okay, don't even know anything about the fact that they're committing an offense. Even the principal actors are politicians. Yes. No, no, the politicians, they know. So why the do they know? No, no, the politicians force are desperate. Okay. okay. They have destroyed everything in this country. In fact, when people say they caught, they caught, they caught, and I laugh. If not for the court, the politicians would have destroyed this country a long time ago. It's the court that stopped them. When, uh, um, the, during the last uh, general election, not the last, the one before the last one, the court, the, 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 the constitution already made provision for primaries. That a political party must have a primaries. There must be primaries. Mm -hmm. you understand? Yes. Do you know what these political parties will do? The constitution will have one primaries. The political party, they will begin to fight each other. They will create two or three fashions and do three primaries. Okay. Or two primaries. They will mm. not throw up candidates and take the name of the candidate and submit to INEC. In fact, that and will not know the one that is the candidate that is that. Oh, and that, wow. that is why in Zamfara and in River States there was there's an issue. There was no uh, uh, government. I would have even loved us to delve into this more because as of yesterday, Senator was asking that rather than having a situation where a fresh primary is conducted to replace a candidate that dies in the course of campaign or whatever, that there should just be an automatic replacement. The, the electoral but the, car, the House yeah. refused to allow a further reading on that bill. No, they, they don't need that bill. Now, the Electoral Act already defined you can choose the type you want to do. No, but on the Electoral Act, primaries. yes, on the Electoral Act, you're not meant to automatically decide who replaces that person. No, you're not meant to do that. Yes. But you have, you have, you have, you can, you can, they, they, they have three layers. Yes, they have three okay, layers. Consensus candidate. Exactly. Could, could it directly mean automatically? They can yes. agree. If by the, the party, yes, the party, but the, the house said that if that kind of thing happens, it means that somebody can decide to assassinate somebody, yes, just because yeah. they have their own exactly. political yes, interests. Yes, you, are, you are right to that effect, but the, I, don't, I don't think they need a fresh legislation on that. On that, because you already have a resolution which choose from the three mm. you can have indirect, you can have direct, okay, and you can have what you call consensus candidate. candidate. So, what you do is to pick either of them, mm -hmm. and the, the law did not say if you have picked one. And that one didn't work for you, you cannot pick another, another one. So long as the party agree, mm. okay, what they need to do is to they, there's already a law to that effect. In fact. You understand? All right. Okay, so let's look, move on to another national daily. Okay, we go to uh Daily Independent and on the big story is still um what we had on the last uh uh, uh story. We must prescribe cross capitan on bundle INEC Jiga. But let's go to another one where it says Tinubu seeks a national assembly's nod to borrow 8.6 billion naira. That is one of the big stories we have to participate in the COP28 climate summit in Dubai, which is also part of the independent for uh, further today. So if That's daily independence. Yeah, yes, daily independence. That's a headline on the bottom page. But as Evans, if you have to ask you this question, uh, Nigerians say the president is junketing from one country to another. 
he complains that we have a lean budget. Mm. Uh, the NSA says that they met an empty treasury. Mm. And any of these conferences or summits or events that the president attends, there is an accumulated budget, financial budget, to accompany him mm. along with his aides. Mm. Now, they also said that we've attended several climate change summits. There mm. is COP27, which we went, COP26, COP25, mm. mm. and that Nigerians do not implement it. Mm. So why do we keep wasting money when there is need for the monies to be utilized here to boost stop our factories our sector why do we keep having leaders that continue to spend expeditiously for no particular appropriate reason so would we say that the president attending cop 28 is necessary or could it be that he intends to possibly create a, a relationship with other heads of states First of all, you know that this president said he's going to continue from where Buhari stopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he told us. That you know what Buhari did? Government of country. He was, he was flying from one country to the other, all over the place. Mm. And at the end of the day, when you ask him a question about what is happening, he he's not aware. Hmm. He's never aware. He doesn't ever know. He's not, he's not aware. Now, this president came uh, during the campaign and said he's going to continue from, from where Buhari stopped. We saw the, the kind of loan mm. that Buhari took. This man is here now. You see, the, they want the National Assembly to approve this, approve this, approve this, approve all the uh, loans. Our debt now it, is 94 trillion naira. 94 trillion, and we are, we are oh, just... Oh, we're still boring. No, we are, we are going to hit the tarmac soon, okay? <laughs> and the worst part of it is that you will not see a reflection of that in the lives of the city. The lives of the people. But it's, it's, it's called sovereign debt. Hmm. When you say sovereign, it means I and you, even the unborn child. That's what it means. But we are not the ones going to take these funds. They are taking these funds on our behalf. And when they take these funds, they begin to tell you that they want to use it to fund the budget. Mm. Okay? Look at our budget now. Look at the kind of budget we rolled out. I know that budget is a statement of intention, not a wow. Okay? But the budget before this one, what is the percentage? What is the performance level? Okay? Because I know that sometimes you have maybe the budget have um, maybe 80 percent mm. of the funds that were, were released okay but in terms of performance you will see 30 25 yeah. in terms of projects mm. and all that so where is the shortfall where where did it so this president for me so far has taken the toga of the one before him okay and he's taking these loans here and they're not minding how these funds will be paid it, it, I think the National Assembly should not approve that. They should how, not. how realistic is that? Yeah, it, it, may, yeah, yeah, it, may, it may not be realistic, you are right, but um, they should prune down some of these things, hmm. okay? Because if you leave it to the executive, they are ready to shut down this country hmm. with, with this kind of profligacy. Now, we are talking about that. You notice that we had a supplementary budget not too long ago. Yes. That supplementary budget for two months. Look at the content. Look at what it meant to fund. It meant to fund the president's wife, uh, car fleet. Meant to fund Couple. legality. Uh, you, you took a note to defend the constitution. Mm -hmm. You are now budgeting to, to, to waste money on illegality, on projects and things that are not contained in the constitution. So it has variance with whatever it is we have. Very true. And that's another trillion, 2.17 trillion naira. That's basically what that is all about. Okay, finally, on the National Dailies, this is Vanguard, where we have the major headline, just like what we just read out on the Daily Independent. Tinubu's new debt rate, actually, for Guardian newspaper, this time around, they said it is above 5 Point one billion naira. That is quite an evasive one. Uh, Barrister Evans just explained or gave us a breakdown. It says uh, he, the new $8.6 billion loan B takes debt above $51.759 billion. Okay, we also have Emo DPO officers to face sanction over alleged escape of suspected rapist. We also have a controversial judgment. We will do our best to reform justice sector, and that is by the Attorney General of the Federation. That's on page nine of the Vanguard newspaper. We also have above the masthead military onslaught forced 160,000 terrorists to lay down arms. We just had uh, um, two or three days ago in Zamfara State where the terrorists have actually claimed to local government. So there's a disparity in that notion by Zulum. We also have um, alleged fraud, immediately not owner of firm awarded 1.2 billion naira contract. I'm going to ask you a question I'm on immediately to actually 
wrap off. Well, sure. Yeah, so I, I actually wanted to, to add a very important um, a key stuff here. It says it's possible to grow a trillion dollar economy in 10 years. Chinyubu. That's on page 8 of the Vanguard. I also wanted to to have that. And, or, what what, that what is the strategy to do okay. that? I was asking a question initially. I was trying to talk about Emefiele first because we've run out of time. And I was trying to ask you because Emefiele is going to spend Christmas in Kuji prison. Yes. Now, recently, there was this an expose about a particular sector of the Nigerian economy, yeah. which a lot of Nigerians feel that since there is already evidence to prove that this person committed fraudulent acts under the nose of Nigerians and used taxpayers' money um, voraciously, no explanation given, mm -hmm. that Emefiele shouldn't be the only one to be going through this procedure. Do you think that what is going on with Emefiele is justified? Let's just be objective in that regard, in as much as we all know what transpired when he was a CBN governor. Yeah, um, the, the likes of Emefiele uh, um, should all be going through that situation. We've had so many ministers, okay? Emefiele was just the, CBN, the past CBN uh, uh, governor. But there are ministers in the government of Buhari that have also embezzled money in the quantum that they may have been accused of allegedly. Okay. okay. So there should be no um, disparity. A crime is a crime. Once there's reasonable suspicion, hmm. um, uh, the, like of, the likes of the former aviation minister, mm -hmm. um, the likes of uh, the accountant general, former accountant general of the federation, Okay, even the um, the former uh, uh, the former the minister of uh, justice. Okay. What was the name? Uh, Malami. Malami. Okay, there are allegations against all of them. Hmm. Um, uh, the former ESCC chairman. Hmm. Okay, they should all be facing the same uh, prosecution. Okay, but here you find just the focus on the MFL. It draws the question. Critic critics have said that um, perhaps the president is. I have his focus on the military for the reason that uh, the currency change which mm -hmm. would have made him to lose the presidential mm -hmm. leader mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, people have said that there's a sense in which if you want to interrogate that further, you want to give that a nod, except okay. that you don't have evidence to prove further. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, all those who have embezzled money on that board, even Buhari himself, mm -hmm. okay, just that in Nigeria, when you talk about prosecuting the past president, people will tell you that they are, they are untouchable. What they are saying technically is that the past ex presidents are above the law. That what but saying. I think once you are longer the president, your immunity is off. So well, what can you do? Off, but they this? don't prosecute them. They don't. Okay, look at uh, Obasanjo. Look at okay. uh, Jonathan. Okay. And the, and the likes. Nobody uh, prosecutes them. All right. Okay. All right, that's how far we are going with the paper uh, pay per view segment coming up on Enterprise this morning. Former Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, fails to meet bill conditions. He will remain behind bars until next year. That is when we come back. Enterprise TV, your one stop shop for news, programs, human angle stories, the economy, sports, and much more. We go the extra mile to bring incredible details to you. So hop on the train now. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.